Hello again, do-it-yourselfers. Terry Peterman here, the internet electrician, and welcome to another video short on current topics here at electrical-online.com and of course right here on YouTube. For today's project, we need to get this here wine fridge into this cabinet, but of course there's no electrical outlet in behind here to plug this in. So what we're going to do is take our power from the outlet that's beside it. We're going to have to remove that box, fish a wire in behind the wall, and put a box, an old work box, into this cabinet and hook it all up. So let's get started. So from behind the camera here, I'm going to show you just exactly a close-up of what we got going. This outlet box back in the corner that we're going to take our power from. It's got power feed in, power leaving. I see they've only done a crimp connection here with Buchanan type connectors because their wires were too short, but we're going to fix that, make a proper splice and a pigtail out to that outlet. And then we're going to add a two wire cable and we're going to fish it in behind this cabinet where the fridge goes. And like I say, using an old work box, we're going to cut that into the drywall there, fish a wire between and connect it all up. And we'll see how that goes. So there you go. There's the box again. Zooming in on that. And then back out. And there's the wine fridge. So let's get started with the project. All right, so here I am beside the box. I've got to get across in behind this cabinet. And unfortunately, the stud is right here on this side of the box. So I'm going to have to pry this box off. I've looked in through here in the gap above the box, and I can see that there's nails holding this box on. So hopefully I'll be able to pry that box away, get the wires out of the box, fish in my new cable. We'll, we'll cut a hole over here for this old work drywall box. So it will just cut a proper hole for it, which I'll show you. And it clamps into the drywall, but we do have to get on the other side of this stud. So first things first, I'm going to go shut off the power. Okay. So just showing you the box here, the whole key to this is trying to do it without making any damage on the drywall that you have to patch. So luckily this box is nailed on. This is how we used to do it. Nail on the metal boxes. And I was able to push it back far enough that I can pry it away from the stud here. I've got the bottom nail loose and I'll be able to get that top nail loose and I'll be able to get this box right out of here, out of the way so I can drill my hole up through that stud and get over to the other stud space where the new outlet's going to go. So I think we're successful so far. I've got the power off, I've got the clamps off of the cables. Once I get this box pried away, I'll be able to push them down in and get fish in my wire. All right, so here's a close up of the box now pulled away from the stud, but inside the wall. So what I'm going to have to do is go, and I'm holding the camera, so excuse the shakiness there, but I'm going to have to go up above that box. I've got the knockout pulled out of this box on the top left corner. And so I'm going to have to drill up right there where my finger was through that stud and then fish it down into where my location for the new box for the receptacle is going to be. All right, so I've marked out where I'm going to put that box. I'm going to put it at the same height and just across into the next stud space, but yet inside the cabinet. I had to leave it fairly close because it'll make it easier for me to cut that hole and then I have to stick my hand in through that hole for the box and fish that wire across. So let me cut the hole. So for this I'm going to use my Ryobi. It's an oscillating tool and that should be able to cut that hole out nice in the drywall without making a big mess, which is always the key. Okay, I should be able to reach up in there and grab that wire once I poke it in through the hole. You notice we're in an outside wall here, so we've got a vapor barrier to deal with. So we're going to have to get some poly to wrap around that box and then put some sealant in behind it to try to patch up the vapor barrier the best we can. Okay, so as you can see, I've got that hole just above the level of the box and I've poked the wire in here. And I know I'm close because I'm going to show you what I see on the other side. If you look when I push the wire, 
from the other side I can see that insulation moving so I should be able to stick my hand in there and fish out that cable okay so now you can see I've got the cable fished through on both sides of this wall and into the back of the cabinet now I just have to get that wire that cable into the old work box and fish it into the existing box as well and then make my splices okay so the reason they call these old work boxes is because you're you're, they're not new. We're not putting them on the stud and then putting on the drywall. We're using them to, to fish in an outlet later as we're doing here. So well, I'm going to have to probably do a little trimming on that hole. But basically you want to feed that cable in through one of the knockouts. And I'll pick the easiest one to get at here. Fish the cable into that. You want to back these screws out as far as you can. There's one on each side, top and bottom. They act as the cable clamps as well as they expand the top and bottom of the box out perpendicular. And then when you tighten up these two screws with the number six Robertson, then these wings flip up. And as you can see, it then clamps the box in between this tab and that wing. So when these wings flip up, then you can see it clamps between here and this wing tightly into the drywall makes a nice tight fit there so that your plug will be nice and solid when you go pull it out it's not going to be loose or pull that box out it, it makes a nice as good as you can get without actually going onto the stud so it's the best you can do with what you have to do, work with when you're trying to fish in a new outlet like this so we'll get this put in place and then we'll put in the receptacle and then we'll go tie into the existing outlet Okay, so I've got the box in place. I got the upper wing is flipped up and I'm ready to tighten that screw, that small Robertson screw. And if you can see the tab in here, you can just see it by the edge of the box. Now you wanna make sure it flips down into place. And you saw it just passed by and went in behind the drywalls where you want it. So now you can tighten up these clamp screws Make sure your box is nice and level in the hole that you made. Left enough room on this side for my plate to fit. And you want to just make sure it's into the hole nicely. I'm just going to give it a little wrap. Finish tightening those clamps. And there you go, that box is in there nice and solid. Now I just need to tighten my, my cable clamp screw, tighten that one down and out of the way as well. Ground the box, of course, and put on my receptacle. Okay, I've got the cable in clamped into place. One of the hardest parts working in these boxes is trying to get that ground wire wrapped clockwise around that ground screw and then leave a tail there to hook onto the receptacle because it's kind of in behind the clamp so it's tough to get at but I was able to get it and I also before I shoved that box in I put a piece of poly in behind there and only put a little hole in the poly so the cable could come through it and then I stuck that poly in behind the uh, in front of the vapor barrier but behind the drywall and just put a little sealant in there and tried to do the best I could to patch up that vapor barrier being this is an outside wall so I put that receptacle on simple just uh, ground on green or the ground screw white on on the silver terminal and black on the brass and we'll put that receptacle back together and then we'll make our splice and put the original receptacle back together turn the power on Use my T-stripper and the hole in it to bend a nice loop in it. Got the neutral already stripped. Nice loop in that one. And again in the ground. Okay. My ground terminal, ground to green. or earth. Tighten that down good. Just need to back off one of these screws. Get 
neutral. And flip it over. And I always like to hook things up. Ground first, neutral second, ground and hot last. And when I take things apart, after the power is off, of course, I usually disconnect hot first, neutral second, and the ground wire last. Push the wires nice and neatly back into the back of the box. And I like to use my drill for the device screws. Plate on and it covers all the the hole I made so it's perfect. Just gotta put those plate screws in. Now over to the existing outlet. Alright, so just hand holding the camera again here. It'll be a little shaky, but you can see. I'm just gonna point to the cable going up there, above where the box is gonna go back into place. So I've poked it up out of the way now, and I've got the cable fished into the box, the new cable. As you can see there, now I'm going to pull that box back into place and screw it into the stud from the inside. All right, if you can see there, I've got two screws in the bottom, right through the inside of the box into the stud, and one up top there in the back. So this box is nice and firmly back in place. Now I just got to put the clamps back in, make my splices with pigtails, and put the receptacle back on. Okay, so I've got my splices made. Like I said, we've got two, three, uh, sorry, a cable in, power in, power out, and now power out to our new receptacle. So we've got six conductors in this box, but luckily it's a deep box, so that's okay for box fill. Uh, one problem was the existing wires were very, very short. They had used like a crimp Buchanan connector to make the tail long enough to make it to the old receptacle, but I don't like those. They're really, you've got to rely on the tape to, to uh, make sure they're insulated, and it's really not approved in that, in that method used the way they did, so... I cut them off. I was able to get a pigtail, so three conductors plus the pigtail into a splice. And we'll tuck those all back in and put the receptacle on, and then we'll go turn on the power. All right, all the splices tucked back in the box. You can see my black tied on to the brass side. Flip it over. Neutral to the silver screws. Bare ground to the green screw. All right, so now I'm just going to run down, turn the breaker back on, and we'll make sure these outlets are working fine. That one's good. Now we'll check the other one and check in with the plug tester. The new one is working just fine. And that's it. Okay, so there you've seen me fishing in a new receptacle for in behind the Sub-Zero wine fridge. We'll push that into place and get it hooked up, but uh, we need the cabinet maker to come back now and do some final touches. So thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please like below and click on the bell so you get a notification when I release new videos. So again, from the Internet Electrician, thanks for watching. Till next time.